We're back with the second edition of Is Your Favorite Distillery's Top Shelf Bottle Worth It? And that's what we're gonna answer today. Welcome in everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, this is our second episode. If you want more of a detailed dive into how we came about this concept. And like why we're doing it and stuff. All that jazz, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, watch the first episode right up here. But this is our uh, second time that we're randomly pulling from a list of distilleries. Sure, yeah, we had a list of all the kind of major distilleries and I said, hey, randomizer, pick five for us to do in the next mm -hmm. episode. And so that's where we are today. We're yeah. gonna do five yeah, more. Five more. But just to remind people, there are three, sometimes four questions, depending on the answer of number three, of uh, questions that we will be answering in this episode. So remind you all, those questions are, is the distillery's most premium bottle worth retail? Do we agree with how that bottle is positioned? Is this the bottle to seek out from the distillery? If it's not, then what is? So there you go. If the answer to three is yes, then there is no four. There is but no if four. If it's, uh, you know, if it's one of those charts. You love charts. I love charts. If no, then, you know. It's called a decision tree, Chad. There you go. Of course there's a name for it. All right, well, <laughs> let's get right into it with our first distillery. James B. Beam Distilling. This is a tricky one to start with, I think. Yeah, it is. And we sort of put some contenders out here. Uh, we could have also had the 30th or any anniversary of any Booker's. Any anniversary of Booker's. Um, the, honestly, the Jim Beam Masterpiece. Any age-dated Knob Creek or anniversary Knob Creek bottle. That's right, yeah. They've got a lot of expressions that you can choose from. So we'll just tell you why we rolled out, starting with Booker's 13. Baker's um, 13. Thank you, Baker's 13 even. Well, Booker's 13, that'd be great that'd though. Be, that sounds pretty Let's good. get on that, James Babim. First release was 2019. And then we thought it was gonna be an annual release, but it took them another four years to come out with another one last year. This time last year, it, yeah. this one was released, yep. So the inconsistency of it all. Unless it becomes an annual release, then probably not. If we get to the lineage, this was a one-off release, right? It was, originally it was just at the Duty Free for international travelers, then they brought it to the gift shop. I think, as far as I know, it's gift shop only, which I think immediately disqualifies, think disqualifies it, it as their top shelf offering. I think they would like to position it from their end as like, hey, this is an example of, again, their lineage and their vision coming together in this one super premium product. Yes, okay, it's super, it's their top, top tier. However, it was a one-off. Like, it's not gonna come back every year, and so it can't hold that position for long, right? Right, in five years, people aren't gonna be talking about lineage. No. Much like now we're not talking about Masterpiece, even though we just brought it up. But... Well, we're bringing it up for the purposes of this conversation. Yeah, exactly. It rules itself out just for that reason, I think. It can't hold that spot forever. It can mm. only hold that spot for a season. Which means? I guess that leaves us with Booker's. Like, logically, after what we've just talked about makes sense. There's four releases a year. It is their most expensive product that is regularly released. But I think a lot of people would disagree now that this well, is their so best. So Jim Beam is tough because they don't have a consistent once a year release. I think if, if, if Booker's was distilled down to one release a year, I think that would be it. I think that would be the one. Now, people can argue, and I can already hear you, because uh, I just thought of this. Well, hey, Knob Creek 18 was only released once a year. Mm -hmm. And then That's the next what I was year, it was released again. So I kind of think it would be Knob Creek 18 over Booker's. Oh, yeah. and then and if we think about that, what about Little Book? I don't feel that way about it, but I think they might feel that way about it. I think we've just talked ourselves out. I of think we've talked ourselves out of Booker's. What? I'm gonna have to redo the thumbnail now. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they might position it as Little Book. I, I would kind of want to disagree with that because it's not. Usually they're not a tried and true bourbon release. Mm. They've got some pretty funky stuff in there. And sometimes they're, they're really good and they work, and other, and other times they don't. Uh, so I feel like what best represents, but th see, that's not exactly the question, is it? It's not, this is a tricky one. That's what I said at the beginning of this. This one's hard. I think they would believe that Little Book is now their top. That's released once a year. It's Freddy knows vision come to life. It comes in a fancy box. It has, you know, its own little story and everything versus Booker's, which comes out four times a year. So I already think this is out. All right, um, now we're left with nothing. I think it's not Creek 18. I think that is a better representation of yeah, the distillery, so. More quintessential let, beam. Let me go grab our Knob Creek 18. Okay. The first release, which this is, did come in a box. The subsequent Again, irrelevant, release but still. Didn't. <laughs> but yeah, Knob Creek 18, 
I guess the question is, is there going to be a 2024 Knob Creek 18? I would hope so. It seems yeah. like it was well, pretty well received. If I we're think going for consistency. It's this. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so let's put it up against the four, three, maybe four questions. Okay. Okay, so the retail on this is about 180. Mm -hmm. Do we agree with that? I do. I think it's solid enough. I know that there's flaws in this logic you know, in this logic, but a lot of people will say, if we go based off of roughly $10 per year of age statement, yeah. that's how they measure whether or not something is in the fair range or not fair range. Not an exact science, but according to that, this is spot on. So I would say yes, for what it is, it's 100 proof, it's 18 years, 18 years old, it's Knob Creek, which we enjoy anyway at nine years. Yeah, so I think it is, it is worth it is worth retail. Retail, and uh, as far as do we agree with how this bottle is positioned, we've already kind of gone through that discussion <laughs> of what do they think their most premium I think bottle they is. They are confused. They are confused, or someone's confused. I don't know. Maybe yeah. we're confused. Are you confused? Everyone's put it, confused. Put it in the comments if we're wrong. And yeah, we answered the if not, then what is? Well, is is it the bottle to seek out? I think uh, so. I I think it is. But there are other ones. Lineage is very good. If they'll ever bring back an anniversary edition of Booker's, Ugh. which they missed the 35 anniversary, so I don't know. They went 10, 25, 30 so far. And then no more. In anniversary bottles. Uh, I'm like, hello, can we get a consistent schedule? Right. Um, if there were a 35th, I'm sure we'd be saying it was that 35th. Are they waiting for 40? I hope not. I don't know. But and then you also, you know, if you don't think this is the one for you, there's also the Knob Creek 15, there's the 12, maybe the Baker's 13 will be an annual release. There are options. Maybe they'll, yeah, I get It's that. a big pool for them. It is. Wish they would get that more figured out. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next one. Wilderness Trail Distillery. I think this one's gonna be a little bit easier to answer because they have a more limited portfolio <laughs> just from being a newer brand. Obviously, I think, mm -hmm. their highest age stated is gonna be their most premium release, according to them. And I think according to most of you, um, which has been consistently the eight year since it come at, came out in I think 2022. I believe so. Um, now, there is a 10 year that has been released. It was at the distillery. It was super limited. I mean, we're talking under 200 bottles, I and think. And they've only put it out once. So uh, TBD on if that's going to be a regular release. Right. I think that's too limited for the, for them to position it as their most premium, premium. available. Yeah, yeah, top shelf, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So it's going to call it the eight year. Uh, between 90 and $100 MSRP for an eight year. Eh. I don't know. I, personally, I think their sweet spot is their six year. Everyone is gonna always, I think, assume that the older the better, but I think they really found a sweet spot with their six year releases. That's kind of what I prefer, and those are around 70 bucks. I agree. We've tasted them blind, and I think we both picked the six year. I feel like that sort of is their sweet spot. I mean, maybe their sweet spot is actually the 10, and if that ever becomes more widely available as the distillery gets older, you know, maybe it, it sort of ebbs and flows past the eight year, but that's really just our opinion. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yes, the eight year is positioned as their most premium. I don't disagree with that. I think just in terms of like taste preference, I would lean towards a six. But if we're going based on just, do we believe this is their most premium offering? Right, Or their yeah. most top shelf offering? I'd have to say yes. Yeah, so let's run it through run it through the questions officially. Uh, is the distillery's most premium bottle worth retail? I would say yes, but it's it's getting kind of, you know. It's on the upper end of yes. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Next up is, do we agree with how the bottle is positioned? I would say mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Is this a bottle to seek out from the distillery? We would say probably not. Well, I, I don't think it's not to seek out. I just think our personal taste preference, I'd rather save a couple bucks and go with the six year. And for me, I, I I'd be perfectly happy with that. Yeah. But I don't think you'll be unhappy with the eight year. That's just how we feel. Oh, agree. All right. Oh, that one was much easier. Much easier than Jim Beam. <laughs> All right, what's next? But before we go to the next facility, we want to hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get both of the t-shirts that we're wearing. In fact, Sarah, the t-shirt that I'm wearing, the cast strength and unfiltered, uh, it's a 24 hour flash sale, 15% off this version and also the blue long sleeve version. Ooh, yeah, 15% we got off. Lots of other stuff there at whiskeyambitions.com. Tell us about it, Chad. Well, all of our glassware, we don't have a Glen Karen in this episode, but uh, all of our glassware, including our water glasses, hats, the rest of our shirts, hoodies, bottle cut candles, elemental elixir, cocktail syrup, and more, always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That's right, Chad, one buck a month gets you access to our exclusive barrel picks after the episode content with us. 
events, and more. Yeah, look at these names. These are just some of the uh, patrons who support us and make this all possible. Yeah, some of the bottles you're seeing today were only made possible to mm -hmm. for us to get and talk about with you because of our patrons. There you go. All right, we're gonna take a little break and we'll be back with our third distillery after this. All right, potentially another very tricky one, Heaven Hill Distillery, um, which I love to talk about. I mean, look at all these beautiful bottles sitting in front of us. I would say maybe not as difficult as Jim Beam, but more contenders. I guess there are more contenders that are regularly released. We have the Elijah Craig 18, um, the Old Fitzgerald Bottle and Bond, William Heaven Hill Heritage Collection, and then Parker's Heritage. Immediately, I do think that while I love it, we got to eliminate the William Heaven Hill. Because of its release? Because it is so limited of a release. It does come out generally once a year. I, I do think they miss a year somewhere during COVID they times. Did, yeah. It bears the name of William Heaven Hill, which would make me think, oh, maybe this is, you know, it's got the distillery name on there. So maybe this is their most super premium or top shelf product. And maybe at one time it was. And maybe at one time it was, but it's so limited and hard to find. It's mostly distillery only. So I think it's gotta go. Fun fact, this is the first bottle that I ever splurged on. Oh, back Chad's in the day. first. $130. <laughs> Baby's first big bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. So now it is. That leaves us with these four. Well, let's just talk about Elijah Craig. Now, some people would say, I would say that the, the barrel proof is, is their best. And, and we're not talking best, we're talking their uh, most top shelf. They're, they're the one that uh, carries the distillery sure. on its back. Three releases a year, um, I think that, that kind of takes it out. Takes uh, the takes Elijah right Craig there. barrel proof yeah. out. Now the 18 year, they used to have 21 and 23 and all these other years. Now it's, I think it's really just the 18. 90 proof and hasn't been getting the best rap here lately. It's a single barrel. I'm gonna say no. Based on the other offerings they have, I don't think they position it as their top, tip top. You know, these three, we have Parker's Heritage. Parker was instrumental in the distillery. Parker Beam. Um, this comes out once a year. And then we've got the Old Fitz release over here. 100 proof, bottled and bond, very, you know, it's definitely the most striking bottle that they release. Right. Comes but it's out two times a year. Two times a year and sometimes three. Now this is a special release, distillery release, the 25th anniversary. So sometimes it's three releases a year. So I think that the regular fall and uh, fall and spring releases kind of takes it out. Special release, which is more just around the distillery, I think also takes it out, so. Yeah, I guess so. I think instead of just continuing to narrow it down from this point, I have an opinion and I will see if you agree with me. So do I. They have recently launched this line called, I mean recently as in recent years, the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection. It has the distillery name on the bottle. That gives us points. Heritage Collection. Like More points. it's honoring, you know, their heritage as a distillery. It's 18 years old, super limited, and it's $300 a bottle. The first, yeah, the first release was 17 year. The next year they did a 20 year corn whiskey. Corn, mm -hmm. They're back to bourbon uh, this year at the 18 year. It feels to me at $300 MSRP with their name on it, it feels as though they're saying, this is the best of what we have to put forward this year. And it's directly under our name versus like the, another expression like Elijah Craig or Parker's, which is yes, a Heaven Hill product, but under mm -hmm. a different expression name. I mean, we could also bring up Evan Williams, like 12 year uh, or 23 year. Sure. Um, but that's sort of the same thing. It's it's not representing their full distillery. So yeah, I agree actually. It's it's the 18 here, it's the Heritage Collection. Yeah, I would say the one ding it would have in its short history is that 20 year corn whiskey. One, because that year, if you're saying that was their best of the best, it wasn't even a uh, bourbon. And two, the corn whiskey wasn't our favorite, but I feel like the 17 and the 18 make up for it. I guess so. I do have to disagree with you a little bit there, Chad, because I think mellow corn is such a strong part of the Heaven Hill DNA to then take something that is probably their most affordable, not low end product, but bottom shelf product, and then do something on the complete opposite end, their most high end product being almost like a mirror of that, yeah. is tied to their DNA. It was cool. I'll give it that. I'm not <laughs> saying I loved it. I'm just saying I think it's consistent with, you know, with their brand. Okay. So let's run through the questions. Is the distillery's most premium bottle worth retail? As you said, $300, but it's in the contention for our best of the year. We have to see how it does blind, but it's some of the best stuff I've ever had. It is some of the best stuff I've ever had. I'm gonna say yes. Even though I never, ever, ever wanna pay that much money for right. a bottle of whiskey. Agreed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we agree with how this bottle is positioned? Yes. Absolutely. 
Is this the bottle to seek out from the distillery? I would say among others, but yes. Yes, it is a bottle to seek it out from the distillery. Is, yes. But as we showed you, there are also many others. And as you said, also, you know, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, like they have a wide range of products yeah. in a wide range of price ranges that hopefully suit everybody. Agreed. Which I like the options. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that wraps up Heaven Hill. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is Lux Row Distillers. Smaller amount. More of a limited product <laughs> Glad portfolio, to see this. Yeah. We're back to sort of a wilderness trail here. Now, just to clarify here, Sarah, just Lux Row. Just Lux Row, correct. They're owned by MGP slash Ross and Squibb, but that's a whole other can of worms. They also own Penelope now, so it's like, maybe we just stick with the distillery brands and then we'll we'll go from there in the future. I don't know, that sounds like a whole big thing. Right, so that, that big Gatsby edition of Remus Repeal Reserve, that's on the contention here, that is MGP who owns them, but. We'll talk about them on their own sometime. Do Lux Row. Yeah. So really two contenders here. We have the uh, very good, I've actually kind of forgotten how good this one is. Very the, the, good. The <laughs> double barrel aged 12 year. Um, this is one back from oh, 2007. We've had this one for, uh, a little bit. This one's from 2007? And then add 12 Oh, and years. then add 12 years. <laughs> yeah. I thought you meant we got it in 2007. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say when we bought this, it was around $130. I think that's right, yeah. Then we have the Blood Oath. Annual release, different treatments every year, but roughly always in the same vein of some finishing, roughly the same proof. What is it, around 90 something? It is 98.6. <laughs> blood, the temperature blood, of your the temperature blood. temperature of your blood. Love that. I think this one's pretty easy. You do? Mm hmm Okay. Because this is more of a distillery only That's release. exactly what I was saying. I'm not sure though what you're gonna say. I think they would say, the distillery would say, this is their tippity top offering. Do you? I do. I gotta disagree. I feel like they look put- Look at the cap. Oh, <laughs> I didn't look at the cap. Look, yeah, look at, at the, this crappy cap. Look at the embossed bottle or whatever. <laughs> sure, yeah. but this one comes in a box. Show them the box. <sighs> no one cares about the box. You're the only one who cares about- Oh, it comes in a box. Okay, so. But this one, if let's go back to the Heaven Hill argument, this is Lux Row branded. But Lux Row Distillers. I feel like the distillery only. It's not what they put out. It's not as customer facing. I definitely think it's this. I've heard their master distiller wax poetically about, you know, the new treatment which changes every year and how they got there and why they decided on it. This is always just a 12 year double oak. Okay. Very so you good. Think this is their point of pride. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's go through the questions. All right, let's do it. Is the distillery's most premium bottle worth retail? Think, retail being 130? Well, the most recent release, Pack 10, I believe, was 130. Mm -hmm. I would say, it since this is a revolving uh, treatment, like this one, Pack 7, if I can even read, I can't, it's That's too small. That's the worst small. part, it's too small and it's in too much cursive, Chad can't read it. Finished in Salturn barrels, they did make that part larger up there. Mm -hmm. So Pack 7, if you like Salturn uh, barrel, that, that, um, flavor or finishing uh, touch to it, then I would say, yes, the 130 is worth it. I mean, I guess when you consider it's a blend of eight and 14 year, two this different eight years. This particular pack. This particular pack and a 14 year, and then also finished. And if it's their most premium product, in their eyes and our eyes, that 130 proof is pretty standard for that one thirty area. Or, 130, I'm sorry, $130. that one thirty price point is pretty standard for that type of bottle. So yeah, I guess okay. Yeah, okay. But if it's a, a treatment that you don't enjoy, then that would change. I would say no. To no. Yeah. And then do we agree with how this bottle is positioned? We kind of just discussed that, but yes. yes. And is this the bottle to seek out from the distillery, or are there other ones? I would say yes. Again, dependent upon the, the treatment that year of mm -hmm. the pack. If not, I would say try to get that 12 year uh, double oak. Yeah, I think so too. Or, I mean, a lot of people like the Rebel 10. Rebel 10 year another is one always. To seek out from a distillery yeah, and something worth, solid. worth discussing also. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I think we do agree with it. And I do think this is the one we look for most from the distillery every year. Correct. Which brings us to our last distillery. And I can already feel the comments going off right now. Our last one for today is Buffalo Trace. Another one with a few options that I think people will feel very, what's the word, divisive about. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, I think, what people think of fir first, or some people think of first, the Pappy line, specifically Pappy 23 being the oldest right. of that line. I mean, we could get into the, what is it, the 25 year Pappy and- Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess technically- rip. 
yeah, 25. Could be that, but let's but, just, we have this one here, so let's talk about it. Right, apart from the 25 year, which I'm not sure about its release schedule, the 10 through the 23 are released once a year, so that puts it, from how we've been talking about these in the series, mm -hmm. in contention. But do we think that is the best example, both from the distillery standpoint and ours, of their most premium or top tier product? I don't think so because I don't think so either. I think they're trying to. I mean, this got adopted from the um, Stitzel, -Weller. Stitzel Weller Distillery, and so they've just been recreating or trying to, you know, because eventually that stuff ran out, and so now it's just trying to hit that mark over and over and over again of something that wasn't even from your distillery's DNA in the beginning. So I don't think for that reason that it can be. Also, it's the most notorious bottle that they have. Absolutely. Also because Julian Van Winkle um, is the one who picks these barrels, not Harlan Wheatley, Buffalo Trace's master distiller. Uh, so that right there, I feel like takes it out. You think that takes it out? Yeah. I, I have to say so too. I think that in the bourbon drinking community, and I think from the distillery standpoint, they're points of pride or more lie in the Buffalo Trace antique collection, which again lies under the Buffalo Trace name. Right. So we're talking right the Buffalo Trace antique collection. It is the collection of their most special antique releases every year and they do multiple expressions under that line. Well, let's just go ahead and, and toss out the other potential contenders like the Weller Millennium, the, mm. the Daniel Weller, all the... Again, I think that falls into the Pappy category. Double Eagle, very rare. Now that. Okay, well, if we go back to the first episode that we did, we talked about the Woodford, the Baccarat. Right. And I think Double Eagle, very rare is very much like that in terms of it's so unattainable. But in the distillery's eyes, that is the top thing, other than maybe the Pappy 25 that they put out anywhere ever. That thing costs like $2,000 retail. Right. And it comes in yeah. a Waterford crystal glass <laughs> with like a hand blown eagle on the inside and outside. It's crazy. And I know there's been like three or so releases. I don't know if they've been back to back in the years. I don't think, I don't think they so. have. So that's uh, a consistency okay. problem. So I think that sort of takes it out of contention. So I feel like there's a lot of good arguments for the BTAC line, but then it becomes which BTAC? Oh, I don't think that we have to choose which one under the line. I think the line itself. Well, I think we got two of the best contenders right here, George C. Stagg and William Lou Weller. As a bourbon distillery, I would lean more towards the bourbons than the rise, but I think just the line itself okay. is I, their most premium top tier I guess offering can, in their eyes. We, I guess we can do that. Okay, I think also in the community's eyes, but do you agree, do you disagree? Yeah, let us Tell us in the comments, I'm sure know. people have lots of opinions. Let's just go ahead and run it through the questions. Is the distillery's most premium bottle worth retail? Retail. Retail, retail. Retail, Retail. absolutely. Absolutely, uh, it's around $100, it may be up to 110 now, something if like that. If you could buy all five of the Buffalo Trace oh Antique God. Collection for $100 each, or yes. 110, whatever it is, you would. Do we agree with how the bottle is positioned? Uh, a little contentious there, right? If we're saying it's BTAC line, full they, stop, then yes. They know it's one of their most coveted, if not their most coveted release of the year every year that people talk about and hunt. They know that, we because know that. people feel like they actually have some chance some, of getting it, whereas the others are such unicorns that they don't even attempt or, or you know, or want to put up the money for even retail, so. Yeah, I have no beliefs that I will see a double eagle very rare in my entire life for purchase. For, for purchase. So um, I would say answer to number two is yes, we agree. And is this the bottle we would say to seek out from the distillery? Mm, I mean, I think- Let's change that to line here. Well, yeah, are these the bottles that we would say to seek out from the distillery? Yeah. I think the answer to that has to be yes, because we seek them out every year. Um, and we stand in line with and, people and fail, who are seeking- usually. And we fail most years, but hey, Chad, you cannot complain because we have them sitting right in front of us. True. Right now, we are very fortunate. No complaints. In that. No um, complaints. Obviously, there are other bottles to seek out. There, everyone seeks out from this distillery all the time. But uh, E. H. Taylor Barrel Proof would be one. If we're going to mention one, I would say that is very worth seeking out. I mean, you people go to the distillery and they're excited when they get an Eagle Rare, a Blanton, mm -hmm. an E. H. Taylor Small it's Batch. True. There's pretty much not a bottle that you can walk away from there with that's not regularly available on the shelf that people are going to be disappointed at. Agreed. Wow. What an episode. That was a lot to talk about. It was. Those were three, like, I don't know, mixed, it was just like three big we ones. We drew three one. big ones and yeah, it took some time. Another long episode, sorry for that. Tell you what, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> Same, I'm gonna go 
I'm gonna go drink some of the stuff we've been talking about. How about that? Hey, um, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you know what you can do? You can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here, and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.